hello everybody good afternoon today and uh, thank you for taking out time to join the uh, uh, this webinar today um, we're going to my name is neelesh uh, i am the founder and chief executive of uh, reach squad uh, we are just getting uh, attendees to join so we'll uh, pause uh, for a few minutes and i'll come back uh, in a couple of minutes uh, to restart the session good afternoon again uh, everybody um thank you for uh, joining uh, this webinar on uh, how to get started on uh, seo for your website a lot of folks have joined so we're already hitting 3 so we're starting uh, the session now i'll just share my screen in today's uh, uh, session we'll uh, talk, we'll talk about uh, how um, you know how businesses uh, can set up uh, or get started on the search engine optimization of their website and uh, so we expect uh, this uh, to be about uh, one or 15 minutes to one and a half hour session so uh, please plan for uh, that uh, that long time and um, in between uh, the session we might have uh, uh, you know we will take a pause in between to allow people to ask questions uh, and feel free to uh, send in your questions so we have uh, folks who will answer on uh, you know as, as the session goes on so you can use the chat button to you know post a question to us so i'll just let me do a quick introduction to all the uh, participants from our side so my name is neelesh uh, i'm the founder and chief executive of lead squad my colleague meenu joshi she is the content marketing expert at lead squad she'll be the one who will be uh, running the uh, the webinar today for us and uh, we have sachin bansal from uh, search value he's the chief executive and founder of search value it's a digital marketing agency based out of delhi and uh, sachin and his team have been doing uh, very good work in uh, in providing uh, you know digital marketing services to their customers globally so he has graciously agreed to participate in today's session and so he'll be one of the uh, panelists today and uh, addressing uh, questions uh, along with us so um, sachin thank you very much for taking up this time to join so that's the quick introduction on the participants so i'll just uh, run through quick housekeeping items to make sure that we are have a smooth session here so um, uh, please ask the question in the question panel we will address questions after every 20 to 30 minutes or so and uh, so we'll pause in between once and then this webinar is recorded so uh, you don't have to uh, take any notes as such we will be posting this uh, webinar on our website uh, in 3 to 4 business days so you can download it uh, or have access to it uh, there um, this uh, session may last up 90 minutes so please uh, including q and a so uh please plan for that amount of time and uh, you know we'll get send you the link uh, for uh, the recording of the session after in 3 to 4 days so with that i'll hand over this to my colleague meenu um she will be uh, taking over uh, and uh, run through the presentation thank you nilesh um, hi everyone as uh, nilesh has uh, briefly he has touched upon uh, what exactly is it uh, that we'll be covering in the webinar I'll, what I'll do is I'll uh, quickly take you through the basics of um, uh, through the uh, agenda that is there today, right? So first of all, we'll uh, discuss a little bit about uh, Google's uh, recent algorithm changes. Uh, we'll uh, talk about the basics of uh, local SEO. We'll talk about the basics of on-page and off-page SEO. we'll uh, talk about growing importance of social as an off page seo strategy then if you have a question like um, whether it's wiser for you to do the seo part yourself or hire an agency we'll be answering that question as well and um, we would talk about the budget options that you have for doing your seo so with that let me begin with the recent updates of google and uh, where exactly is seo headed right now so i'm sure that for the past a uh, couple of weeks you've been hearing a lot about uh, hummingbird and how it would impact seo so initially i would touch briefly upon that and for those of you who don't uh, really know about hummingbird it is uh, google's newest search algorithm update right so it's going to update uh, it's going to impact seo in a lot of ways so we'll be touching on that briefly The first thing is that Hummingbird is going to change SEO's focus. So let's understand how it's going to do that. So Google is uh, right now focused on giving the most relevant answers for uh, askers queries, thus changing the focus of uh, search results as well as for SEO. So initially what happened was that the focus was on keywords. Now the focus will shift to context. Uh, I'll explain this. initially the seo activities uh, were more centered around keywords 
with emphasis on whether the particular keywords or the or a particular string of words they appear together in all the different elements of a post or a web page right but now uh, with hummingbird uh, the focus will shift to context the search will be more context and intent driven with the uh, google uh, will try really really hard to uh, make sure that the searches query is answered so all the search results that it will display will be according to that so the focus of seo and all the seo marketers should change in in the similar fashion right so this means that um, seo focus should be on long tail question answer format key phrases for instance how to do something right so how do we know that uh, google's intent is towards this we know it because one thing is that uh, you i mean uh, it has been announced by google that this is what they'll be concentrating on and uh, google's own responses to questions like what who where when queries it gives us enough evidence that its intent is focused on context based search right so there is something called knowledge graph that it uses to answer basic queries of people right without the need need uh, for the searchers to actually leave google so knowledge graph what it does is it has uh, curated answers from uh, multiple sources and it has validated them so it is a very reliable source that google uses right so google even allows searchers to give feedback about the correctness of information that is there on knowledge graph and users can even can even report any incorrect information so this uh, once again this makes it uh, very very re relevant to people who are searching see this is uh, the knowledge graph this is the thing that i'm talking about for instance right now i searched for uh, my key phrase for uh, searching uh, here was uh, mona lisa right so this is the knowledge graph that uh, google displays so here you can see there is the basic information that is there about the painting right so it has all the different links to uh, related things for instance for instance the artist who has created it so what i can do is without going to any of these uh, links i can just uh, navigate through these uh, different uh, links here and be on google itself and find out what i was uh, initially looking for right so this is how it has uh, made searching easy for people what it is trying to do is it's trying to make uh, uh, answering questions easy for the end user right they it is make, making it easier for the end user so another thing that i spoke about was uh, the feedback part so as you can see that um, uh, if if uh, i am an authority knowledge authority on this uh, particular subject and i find that uh, some information provided by google is not correct so what i can do is i can just click on this wrong link for uh, it is there for each of the particular uh, set of information for individual information it's there so i can just click on that google will allow me to suggest changes for this particular uh, search and uh, what i'll have to do is i'll have to give a uh, link to my source where did i get the information from right so uh, you can suggest changes like that so that's why it's uh, very very focused on answering people's queries another thing is uh, google kerosene search i'm sure uh, you've seen it already for informational based uh, searches it is uh, generally it is displayed by google when the search query can be answered by more than four or five options for instance uh, if my uh, search query is something like best movies of 2012 then i would see something like this this is what the kerosene search is here you can see i can navigate through the different genres the years right so i can uh, navigate through here itself without going to any external website so this is for informational uh, searches however uh, it is also being implemented in local business searches in US it's been done there already it's not implemented in uh, India's local business searches yet but it will definitely be done uh, in near future so the queries uh, that it might impact will be something like hotels in Bangalore etc whatever whatever will show up more than four or five options so you as uh, businesses uh, uh, or local businesses you should be ready to uh, you know compete here compete for this space as well so that was another part now the third factor is uh, the decreasing emphasis on uh, the actual presence of keywords in the URLs for ranking pages or posts so there uh, there is a ranking factor correlation analysis that has been conducted by search metrics and they found out uh, that Google's emphasis on the presence of keywords in URLs is decreased right so uh, it doesn't mean that presence of uh, relevant keywords is not 
important anymore. It still is very, very important. But uh, just that it's lower compared to what it was uh, last year or, you know, in, in previous times. So there is more room for other signals and ranking factors now. Those will have more impact on, uh, the, on how Google ranks particular websites or blog posts or pages, right? So, as I've stated before, uh, intent and context-based uh, keywords are of importance now. So, how, how would these changes uh, change SEO for us, for us marketers and for businesses? So, whoever has been uh, writing, uh, following uh, Google's guidelines about writing quality content with long-tailed keywords, right? Uh, those uh, people, those businesses would not be penalized by Google at all. They would continue to rank well. One thing that uh, marketers, SEO experts, uh, businesses, they need to do is uh, to focus their keyword research uh, towards the context of um, the user's search. I mean, what will, think about what exactly will people search for and think about it in uh, long tail form. Right? For instance, um, and, uh, if, my, if I'm writing a post about uh, how to prepare for CA exam, so I should concentrate on these uh, long, long tail keywords. And another important thing is that my post should actually answer the question. That a keyword just shouldn't be there for just for the sake of it. It should be there and my post should also answer the question. Then only would my content will be considered quality content. So that was the first part of it, uh, of changing the uh, algorithm of Google. That is, it's giving uh, more importance to context and intent based searches now. Right, so the second second part of changing SEO is um, understanding the importance of social signals as a part of SEO. So before social and SEO were separate entities, right, more or less. Social was more a way of uh, getting viral and bringing traffic from uh, different kinds of social networks. Now once again uh, the uh, intent has changed completely. Social is a very very strong ranking factor which is used by Google. Social signals are now one of the strongest ranking factors used by Google to rank content in searches. So how do we know this? We know this because uh, of Google's emphasis on its uh, own social network, which is Google Plus. So uh, we know that uh, this shift is there. So if you are on Google Plus, you definitely rank better. There's no doubt about it because uh, uh, we, we have seen this for a few of our clients as well, that um, uh, they, they were not ranking before. But as soon as uh, they established their authorships on Google, as, as soon as their authors got on Google+, Plus, as soon as they uh, established uh, their uh, publisher, uh, publisher link on uh, Google+, Plus, uh, they started ranking. So there's no doubt about the fact that uh, if you are on Google+, Plus, you rank better. So there are a couple of things that are there to be considered here. So the first one is authorship. So whoever is a Google verified author, they're rewarded, rewarded with better ranks. And uh, many, many SEO experts have been saying that author rank is the next big thing. It definitely is. Uh, it would be a measure of author's uh, article velocity, the social traction their uh, posts draw, uh, the authority of the publisher uh, sites where they're posting, and the author's Google Plus following and interactions. Right? So this, uh, what does this mean? This means that the more popular a particular author is, it would, uh, they, he would pass along the benefit of their rank to their websites as well, wherever they're writing, right? And uh, inversely, another thing is that authors who are writing for high authority publishers, for instance, maybe Mashable, etc., they would have better author rank. The, those websites also would have uh, better author ranks. Whoever, I mean, uh, an author that writes for Mashable, if they write for uh, Lead Squad as well, then uh, Lead Squad would have a better uh, chance of ranking, right? So one thing that you have to do is uh, get your authors on Google Plus and establish their authorship, right? The second thing that uh, must be considered is uh, publisher markup. So Google's uh, verified publishers uh, are rewarded with uh, better ranks. I will uh, talk about this later on as well. So another thing, uh, important thing to be considered is that uh, Google has already declared that it has started ranking hashtags mentioned on Google Plus. So the one thing you're supposed to have is a Google Plus page for your business. You should start sharing quality content there and you should use hashtags as well because hashtags are searchable now on Google. Right, so if you want to be found, you have to use hashtags as well. Now, 
uh, search uh, metrics uh, ranking factor correlation analysis so uh, once again ranks uh, google plus as the factor with highest correlation with search ranking so google plus is the most important factor that google uh, takes into consideration right now according to the search that they have the research that they have conducted once again uh, facebook mentions repins and tweets for the form uh, uh, important high correlated factors so what should businesses do about this have a Google Plus page for your business. As I've said before, that's how you'll be able to establish uh, the publisher part of it, the publisher um, for your uh, publisher thing for your uh, business. Uh, you should have Google Plus profiles for all your authors, right? And you should establish uh, authorship as well. How exactly to do this? I would um, cover that later on during the webinar. Encourage the use of hashtags on all social media that love it, especially Google Plus, right? So these uh, two factors were uh, I've covered. Now the th coming to the third part, which is local SEO. Now what Google does is it gives importance to local businesses for local search queries, like restaurants, jewelry shops, etc. Here's a proof. See, I uh, looked up Oracle and uh, look at the uh, results that it gave me. It uh, gave me its location near Bangalore, right? So this tells us that search is becoming local. Now, if I look up gold jewelry, then I'm uh, once again I'm showed um, I'm shown uh, searches that are local in nature, right? So as you can see, that they show up just below the the sponsored ones. The these are the sponsored uh, searches, and just below them, all the local searches show up. So to make sure that uh, you are here, you are uh, here on uh, uh, you start showing up here on local searches, you have to make use of Google's rich snippets. How do you do that now? You have to be present on uh, Google Places, uh, you have to have a Google Plus page, and you have to ask people, uh, whoever your uh, satisfied customers are, to write reviews for you. Right? So, yeah. Be locally visible, have a local business Google Plus page, have a Google Local account with a local address, integrate your Google Places account with your Google Plus page. As, as I said before, ask your uh, satisfied customers to write reviews for you on Google Places. Be on local search engines. Just uh, you don't have really have to go for a premium plan or anything like that. Just get a free listing there, even if you don't have money to invest in the premium plans, right? One thing, once again, you must remember is to have consistent contact information across all networks. Your addresses, your phone numbers should not vary across different listings. Then uh, you have to stick to certain uh, Google Plus local quality guidelines that Google provides. So I'm giving uh, you a link to that here. What you can do is you can take a look at it later on when we send you the presentation, the PPT, right? So another thing uh, to be found locally is to good, uh, do good uh, on-page SEO. We will uh, be discussing this as I move forward uh, in the presentation. So a few other points that must be considered uh, given the change uh, in uh, Google, change that Google is doing is uh, that uh, conversational searches are also gaining importance. Uh, voice searches and mobile searches are increasing, right? So voice searches would most probably in the form of questions more often than not. So for instance, if I make a query, what's the closest place to buy the iPhone 5S for my phone, right? So a traditional search engine, uh, uh, what it would do is uh, it would try to find uh, matches for words like buy or iPhone 5s but uh, hummingbird what it would try to do is to find the meaning behind all the different words you know it would get em give emphasis to the fact that uh, uh, I have asked the question what's the closest place to buy the iPhone s to my home what's what's closest to my home so one thing of importance here is that if you have uh, uh, provided your uh, location information to Google then it can use it to show you perfect relevant results for this particular query right so uh, this is one thing that is getting importance uh, with uh, the change coming word that has been implemented uh, once again uh, freshness of content uh, has been awarded uh, has been rewarded by google in uh, past and it will continue to do so so write frequently write about trending topics in your domain right if you are blogging that is so those uh, were the updates that uh, google has uh, made in uh, its search algorithm and uh, some other updates that are there. Uh, there are uh, a few more changes that uh, Google is making and we'll be, we'll be discussing that as we go further in the presentation. Right, so now I've uh, come to uh, the part where we'll talk about the different SEO ranking factors. There are multiple. 
So uh, these are the ranking factors that uh, found importance in the correlation analysis that search metrics did. I have divided them into contextual and non-contextual factors. Here are all of these factors. I'll go through them uh, one by one. I'll just briefly touch upon them. Right. So as I've said before, Google Plus ones um, have the highest correlation. That is, uh, they are the most important ones. Right. Uh, so are other social shares. As you can see here, Facebook is there, Pinterest, Tweets. These have found a pretty good uh, high ranking in the particular research. Then uh, number of backlinks has a pretty good correlation, but only the number of backlinks is not important. The quality of these links is also very important, right? This is, this is how the focus has shifted. Then uh, the unnatural keyword overuse is being devalued. It will be penalized if you, you know, unnecessarily uh, stuff keywords in. Then uh, presence of description is a very positive thing. Content, of course, has to be quality content and should be very relevant. Uh, number of internal links is also important. Then uh, keywords and body in, in external internal links and keywords in H2 and H1 tags uh, is also important. As I've said before, um, uh, it's not that keywords uh, are not going to be important anymore, just that the keywords uh, should be contextual, right? So the non-contextual uh, parts that are uh, that affect SEO are uh, your length of the URL, the position of keyword in the title, the keywords should ideally be towards the beginning of the title, the existence of uh, H2 and H1 tags in your pages and uh, posts, what is the site loading speed, it shouldn't be very slow, then uh, site maps should be there, that, um, site maps make it uh, easy for uh, Google to crawl you, right, and there shouldn't be duplicate content. There's uh, another thing called uh, page rank. Uh, it was an important factor in the past, but Google hasn't really updated in quite a few months. So uh, it's still a part of Hummingbird, but uh, uh, other points are there that have gained more importance towards it. So I'm not going to focus too much on it right now. Uh, just one thing, uh, work on building quality backlinks, because uh, this anyway, it's an individual factor also of importance. So it anyway has importance. This is the factor that used to affect page rank, page rank in the past. So work on building quality backlinks. Uh, negative signals, I'll quickly run through them again. So high bounce rate. If uh, a person, if a searcher is uh, using a particular search query, arriving to your website and bouncing off, bouncing off immediately, then uh, that means that uh, that particular, uh, that particular uh, query, the, that particular answer search result wasn't relevant to that person, right? So Google will take that into account for uh, ranking your article in, that, in the future for that particular keyword. So you have to make sure that you don't unnecessarily use keywords just to make yourself rank, right? Add heavy content uh, is once again, it has been penalized before, it will, be, it will continue to be penalized. You know, you shouldn't have many ads above the fold. Uh, your content uh, should be in depth, it shouldn't be shallow, J just shouldn't touch the surface of something just for the sake of uh, getting ranked. Uh, slow site load, once again, it's, uh, not, it's not a good thing. Then keyword stuffing, as I've uh, spoken about this before, keyword stuffing shouldn't be done. Duplicate content, once again, would be penalized. Purchased uh, links uh, would be penalized because they are most, uh, most in most cases they are very low quality. Then, uh, if uh, if somebody has uh, flagged you as a content pirate or a content uh, farmer, that once again it's not gonna do good for you uh, or your reputation, right? Your reputation as a publisher. These were the signals uh, that affect the SEO right now. So, with that, what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll pause for uh, a couple of minutes to take a few queries if you have any before I move on to the next part, which is fixing your on-page SEO elements. So, uh, Nilesh, over to you. Thank you, Minu. Um, so, f folks, we have been getting some questions on the question panel here. We have been uh, addressing them uh, as per uh, whatever information we have. Uh, so, feel free to please post your questions here, and I will try to get them addressed. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll cover some questions which have been asked here. So one was the question about what is the scope of link exchange in an SEO. Sachin, um, I'll let you answer that question. So can you please unmute and uh, you know, address that? Uh, see, link exchange, uh, everyone says that link exchange is dead, but that is not the case. Uh, link exchange should be done in a very contextual manner. If you are an expert of a particular industry, then uh, your expertise should come up from the different forums around that industry or the different guest blogs and that's how you can actually link back. 
but if you say there's kind of a spam directories that used to exist earlier and if we should actually build links on them then that kind of a link building is absolutely right so anything wherein even while you are actually posting a content in a particular context if even in those forums or blogs if you are actually adding uh, value to the end user who is going to read those uh, read the information that you're going to send across and then you are actually linking back to your website then it is absolutely fine moreover there are more social signals that uh, are affecting google and google rankings and uh, you should now seriously consider as minu was speaking about that you can actually post that post whatever is the meaningful information for your audience on facebook twitter uh, google plus google plus is very important so that is how you can actually uh, create natural links across the web pages thank you sachin so i think there was there are a couple of questions on h2 and h1 tags folks who understand html they would probably know what those are so there are heading tag which are part of the web page so that's what uh, h2 and h1 tags are uh, so it's a html 101 um, you can sort of refer to that and um, then we have a good question from barbara which she's asking uh, is uh, if emphasis is on given on long tail terms and sachin i want your inputs here too if emphasis is uh, is, uh, is given on long tail terms how to identify them when google has stopped sharing content related to a site by nearly, uh, nearly 75% so basically you're not getting all the keyword data hence leaving us with the low scope to knowing the exact terms and phrases that that are driving traffic to the site so uh, what i perceive um, and sachin please add on to it uh, what i perceive is uh, so obviously in the in the world where google doesn't want to share data i mean uh, you cannot predict data uh, it's very hard very scientifically so uh, webmasters is one tool which uh, gives us data and uh, uh, there was a follow on question as well from barbara saying you know what if uh, you know since it's a google product uh, again then they may or may not uh, share uh, correct data there i mean it's very hard to lie on the large scale um, given uh, other google products we have seen and experienced so far uh, so that's our but we will uh, get more uh, information uh, and, and help sachin so can you please address and add on to what i've just said and uh, you know uh, answer barbara's question you already covered uh, one of the uh, way that you can still get what are the search queries by means of keyword planner tool which is still google provides if there are, if you are for example uh, you are a technical services company and you are providing uh, services around iphone application development then what you can do is you can still type that keyword and you would still be able to figure out what are a more popular keyword searches from the keyword planner to uh, from google adwords the next one is uh, what exactly are the search queries which are on your website how people are being able to search you and reach you in that case the uh, google has stopped giving that information on google analytics but uh, you can still f- uh, figure out some information through google webmaster tool and google analytics so within google analytics that there is a section which says search engine optimization and then it takes you to search queries and from there uh, that section that you would probably be able to figure out most of the keywords you would not be able to figure out probably uh, that data is not very correct in the sense uh, uh, the way google analytics was that it could give you exact number of number of searches and number of visits on a particular keyword but it would still be good enough for you to figure out uh, what are the search queries and how people are thank you sachin i'll take a couple of more questions here so we're getting a lot of questions here uh, we will address them as we go along in the presentation uh, but i'll take a couple more so what should i do in terms of content that's a question from uh, pranav and uh, two questions actually what should he do in terms of content and second is uh, how can we rank for local searches so pranav i think minu has already covered uh, some of the information uh, on the local search so you have to create uh, you know google places pay uh, you know information so all that stuff you have to all on the local sites you have to uh, you know create a profile for your business and uh, regarding content i mean content is a, is a big question in itself but i think the first thing which a businesses can do is to have a blog and start from there and you know start regularly writing about that so that should be the uh, quick answer to that but it's a long story content because content has a various forms could be presentation could be video could be you know uh, a podcast and you know uh, what not so all of that uh, falls in the gamut of content so whichever uh, you know way you are comfortable with in building content and producing and sharing Uh, you have to uh, uh, you know figure that out yourself but blog seems to be the most popular and the easier uh, one to set up and do 
and uh, it also attracts a lot of uh, traffic based on the uh, you know if you provide data to sort of content uh, searchable content to Google and if, you, if your stuff is good then that has the best shot of getting uh, searched. I'll take a couple of more questions here. Um, there is a question from Priya Arora in a company's blog what is desirable content only about company or it should be about industry etc too. So I think that's a very good question because the purpose of blog is uh, not uh, only to write about yourself or uh, you know only write about industry. I think uh, our philosophy in general around blog is to uh, serve content which is of use to your customers or addresses the needs and uh, you know um, requirements of a customer. So that's what uh, we would advise uh, you know uh, folks who are writing uh, uh, you know content on the blog. I mean, if you write about yourself, uh, there are little chance people are going to search for you. Mostly people will search for the things they need. So, for example, if, the, if they're searching for how to generate leads using Google AdWords, right? Now, they may not search for lead squared. They will probably search for how to generate used uh, leads using uh, Google AdWords. And if we write about that, then there could be a possibility that we, you know, if we have done our, our stuff properly, that we get, we get a rank there. And by virtue of that, we, uh, the, the potential visitors discover uh, lead squared. So similarly, in your uh, business, you'll have to figure out what that content is and, uh, you know, write appropriately. So I'll just take one last question and then we'll uh, move to uh, uh, move back to the presentation. One question is from Shatru. What he's saying is if you uh, write a, um, you know, if you're doing an SEO and you do meta, meta description uh, or on a page mm -hmm. content, if you're saying grade six as in V, V, I, uh, English V, I, and then you say grade six as in six in numerical six and TH. And then you say grade mm -hmm. six SIX. So will that be uh, considered a single phrase or uh, different? I mean, I have some ideas, but uh, uh, you know, you want to address uh, that. So if I have understood, so let me say this means V I six is basically a search phrase here. That's basically what he's saying is if the same number uh, is represented in multiple ways uh, in the content, will it be constituted uh, as duplicate? I mean, I don't think it will be duplicate. Um, most likely it will be uh, considered as a similar content. Um, it will not be penalized for being duplicate uh, is what I think because they are different uh, pieces of content but it, it, it will be a bucket, uh, it will be in a bucket of similar content rather than uh, duplicate as such. Yeah, even uh, so even if similar content is there, so Google is not saying that it is kind of penalizing you for that if uh, the property is yours only, it is just that it is not going to give you any weightage for, uh, for the similar content which is there. But if in case it finds out that you are not the original author of the same and it sees that you are a regular offender in terms of that you are just publishing your website is just kind of an aggregation of content which is from just RSS feed. In that case it would be very difficult for you to rank your website. Perfect. So we'll, uh, we'll continue to answer the questions we're getting here and I'll let uh, Minu continue with the presentation and we'll stop one more time towards the end to uh, take some more questions. Minu. Thank you Nilesh. Uh, many queries uh, have been answered right now so uh, if you have uh, any other confusions uh, regarding the queries that came in we will be covering uh, some of it uh, later on as well in the webinar. So I have uh, come to the third part of the webinar which is uh, to fix your on-page SEO elements, how to go about doing it. One, uh, the most important part of uh, an on-page uh, uh, SEO is uh, uh, the actual content that you're creating. That is the most important part. Uh, one way to go about it, as uh, Nilesh uh, said, is to blog, right? Uh, other than that, there are uh, several other uh, elements, so I'll uh, cover them briefly here. One of them is uh, permalinks or uh, URLs. Uh, for those of you who are on WordPress and who blog, uh, you would be aware uh, of the concept of uh, permalinks. I would discuss that. And most probably I think uh, you'll be aware of the concept of XML sitemaps. Th that is what makes your uh, site crawlable. So that is one very important on-page uh, SEO factor. Keyword research and keyword appearances and uh, key page elements is another very important factor. Then uh, uh, you have to fix your normal on-page SEO options, that is uh, to have uh, the contextual key phrases, etc. in uh, different elements like meta titles, meta description, etc. Site speed is another on-page uh, factor, that is that affects uh, uh, your rank. Then uh, duplicate content, right? Let me begin by uh, talking a little bit about uh, permalinks. 
So if you are uh, actually wondering what they are, they are the URLs of your individual posts, right? So for instance, uh, this, this is a permalink. Those of you who are in WordPress, you would probably be knowing this. You have to change your permalink structure from the, uh, so this is uh, actually this is more relevant for uh, the WordPress users because uh, if, you, if you have an HTML website then uh, it's easy for you to uh, set up whatever particular permalink uh, structure, whatever URL structure you want. However, uh, when you are on WordPress then uh, your default permalinks are uh, in the form of numbers, right? And they aren't very SEO friendly. So for instance, uh, this, this was my default permalink structure. Which is more SEO friendly, you think? This or this? Uh, this has no mention of the of what the post is about, right? This tells me what exactly the post is about. You don't have to use numbers if you want to structure your permalinks properly. And uh, once again, uh, this permalink with the proper post name here appears more logical to readers uh, as well. Whoever is searching for uh, this particular content and suppose uh, this comes up then uh, I would not be able to make out what exactly this is, right? But this will tell me what the post is about. Another fact is uh, don't use complete title as permalink of individual blog post. This once again is a problem uh, that WordPress users will uh, face because uh, by default what happens in WordPress is the post title is set as the permalink as well. So uh, your permalink should have no more than four or five words after your uh, domain name. For instance, um, if you have some seven, eight words uh, in your permalink, then that is too much. I mean, you shouldn't do that. And uh, your uh, focus key phrases, they should be towards the beginning, right? Here uh, is the uh, place where you want to put the, uh, your keywords, your main key phrases. So why should you do it? Because uh, Google gives more weightage to the initial words. So if your key phrases are there, the key phrases that you are uh, that you want to rank for, if they are there in the beginning, then uh, you would rank better. Then uh, one more thing is that long permalinks uh, aren't visible completely in the search results. Thus, if you have a very long permalink, it would uh, make it difficult for readers to figure out if the result is relevant to their search. Uh, this is uh, if they are solely looking at the URL. Of course, uh, the uh, titles and the description, etc., will be there. But I'm just talking about the URL here. Right, so uh, that is one element that you need to fix. You need to have uh, the permalink or the URL structure fixed. I, before I move on to the next uh, elements of uh, on-page SEO, I would give you a quick tip. If uh, you use WordPress, please install uh, WordPress SEO by Yoast. It's a very, very useful plugin. It would uh, help you fix your, uh, uh, a lot of your SEO elements. It will help you, your uh, meta titles, meta descriptions, etc., thus helping you get found. It would help you generate XML sitemaps automatically, thus making your website uh, more structured and uh, for search engines to crawl. And it will help you take care of duplicate content as well on WordPress, thus improving your overall uh, website rank. So I will not go too much into the details of this uh, because uh, we already have conduct conducted a webinar in the past on the topic. If you want uh, to dig deeper uh, into uh, these uh, these points, then you can uh, access that particular webinar here. So we'll be sending you this PPT so you can uh, access that webinar here. I will not go much, too much into the details of that. Let me come to having a crawlable site structure which is to create sitemaps. What exactly is a sitemap? It's a structure, it's a map that uh, search engines follow to crawl your complete website. You know, so if, you, if your website has a good clean structure which is easy to follow for search engines, then you would be given the benefit of that. See, uh, this is a sample. Uh, this is your home page and the different uh, pages are linked. It's a very neat site structure, right? So this is what I'm talking about. How, how do you create sitemaps or how do you fix sitemaps? So as, uh, as I've uh, said before, um, if you're in WordPress, then you can do it very easily using a plugin, right? However, uh, if you are on uh, other uh, platforms, then, uh, you, then the procedure would be a little different. In any case, uh, you should have webmaster access to be able to do this. You can do it manually also by creating a .xml file and uploading it to your website. I've given you a link uh, here to a Google uh, support document. It shows you very, very easily how to do it. It's, it's pretty easy to do it. You can uh, just go through this link later on and uh, create it yourself if you want to do that. However, uh, another easy, very easy way to do is to use um, external XML generators. There are multiple, uh, like this one here or this one here. Once again, uh, you can uh, access them later on because I've linked them here. 
So what you need to do is uh, having generated a simple XML uh, sitemap using, uh, using these links, you have to place it in the root directory of your website. And after you've done that, you have to submit your sitemap in Google Webmasters tool. This I'll show you where uh, to do it, having generated it. No matter how you create it, if you create it like this or if you create it using uh, an external tool, you have to submit it here in Webmaster. See, this is my sitemap here. All I have to do is uh, click on this and uh, give the URL that I got from the tools that I created using. It's fairly simple. So you just have to submit uh, your sitemap here and later on, um, even if it does not, if you're not able to generate it correctly, then uh, your webmasters uh, will tell you that you have not done it correctly and you need to do it again. So you can do that. This is uh, one of the very important uh, aspects of uh, on-page SEO, sitemaps. Now coming to uh, keywords. As Sachin had uh, answered one of the queries, uh, which, which was about uh, keywords, how to uh, you know, find, really find the keywords uh, now that Google uh, Planner, Keyword Planner is gone. So uh, the Google uh, Keyword Tool is gone. So there are multiple ways and uh, there are multiple updates also that have happened. One thing is that Google has completely moved to secure search, right? thus limiting the keyword data which is available for fixing the SEO. This is in analytics. 91% of organic referral data is encrypted. This uh, really differs uh, from uh, business to business. This differs, but it's around in that range right now. Then context and intent based posts are preferred. So you have to concentrate on long tail key phrases with questions like how and why. So these are the updates that I'm discussing right now. Once again, uh, keyword tool is gone. You have to use keyword planner, which is, it is uh, pretty good once again. It will give you some idea of keywords uh, relevant to your website. What are the implications? See, this is what Sachin was talking about when he said that uh, uh, the most of the keyword data is not available right now, right? More than 90% keyword data is encrypted. Uh, this is uh, for organic searches. However, you have a way around this. You don't have to worry about this. Uh, use webmasters. Um, Sachin, I think uh, he answered this thing. I'll show you where exactly in webmasters you can find this thing. A search query report uh, you have to find in webmasters to be able to do this. Okay, so I am in webmaster right now. Go to your search traffic, go to search queries. You will be able to see all the different search queries uh, that are there for your business that people have used to arrive on your website, right? So you can export this, uh, you can export this data as well. So uh, this would help you understand what exactly are the keywords uh, that people are actually ranking to find uh, stuff like yours. Right. Uh, another thing that you can do here is, uh, for instance, if you go to top pages, you will be able to see which particular pages of yours are ranking. And if, if I, for instance, if I click on this particular post, I'll be able to see what are the keywords uh, uh, that people use to arrive on this particular uh, page of mine, this particular post of mine. Right. So how will this help? This will tell me. If I find that uh, any irrelevant uh, keyword is there that my post is ranking for, uh, I can uh, take measures to see that it doesn't happen because, for instance, if somebody uses an irrelevant keyword and he somehow lands upon my website, they would bounce off uh, immediately, right? This is one of the factors that Google is considering now to rank sites, so I don't want that. So I can take care of all of that using this data. So it's fairly easy to find in your webmasters, right? So you can take care of this. Right, so I, I just spoke about this. You know, you can find out which keywords your specific posts are ranking for. Uh, another thing is that uh, in Google Analytics, even though the organic uh, uh, search query data is gone, uh, you still have paid traffic data, right? You can uh, download it from AdWords, or if you have Analytics and AdWords integrated, you can access the support from Analytics itself. So for this, uh, you have to, uh, you know, just log into Analytics, to go to Acquisition, Keywords, and then Paid. You'll get a whole list of uh, keywords uh, that your particular ads are ranking for, and uh, you can download them. So that will also give you an idea of the relevant keywords. So uh, in addition to that, there are uh, other keyword tools as well. So this, uh, these tools are in addition to Keyword Planner. So I'm sure that uh, wh whoever uh, uses Google, uh, you have been keeping up to date with the fact that uh, Keyword Planner is in. Right? So I'm sure you've looked at it. 
so I'll not go uh, too much into the details of that. So Sur is another tool that allows you to look up uh, more searched or keywords on different platforms, right? So let me quickly show you how. Okay, so. Uh, what I'll do is I'll not uh, go online to uh, I think we are, we are uh, facing some connectivity issues so I'll uh, what I'll do is I'll not go online and show you this thing maybe later on I can do this when uh, the connectivity is better right so I'll just give you examples here anyway uh, because uh, all of these links uh, are here you can just uh, click and uh, take a look at them it's pretty uh, basic you just have to go there put your uh, query in and you'll be able to see all the different uh, uh, keywords suggested by these different tools Right, so Uber Suggest is once again it's a very uh, good mm, keyword uh, tool. It uh, uses Google Suggest API to suggest you keywords. WordStream is another one, which is uh, a premium tool. So you don't necessarily have to go for it. I would uh, stick to a uh, free tool when I'm, uh, especially when I'm just starting off. Uh, another one is uh, CMRush. It is a competitor intelligence tool. Here you can find out how exactly your competitors are doing for raw specific particular keywords right so how exactly they're ranking the backlinks that they have etc one of uh, this once again as I've said that uh, it's a premium tool so you don't have to necessarily go for it but if you want you can try it uh, for free uh, for some time and uh, subscribe to the paid version if you have the budget for it it has a, a free plan free plan as well where it gives some uh, limited data right so uh, these these are some additional tools other than uh, keyword planner analytics and your webmaster right so you can make help of uh, take help of all of these now uh, the question is having done the contextual uh, keyword research the question is to have those keywords on the on your on page seo elements so uh, let me uh, begin this by telling you how exactly is it that post appears in search results for instance if i uh, search for android architecture then this is how a particular post might appear, right? This is my SEO title, this is my URL, and this is the snippet, right? So all of these elements are the ones that you want to have control on, complete control on, right? So uh, if you are on WordPress, once again, it's fairly easy to do it with the help of plugins. It's fairly easy with the help of uh, Yoast plugin. So once again, you can take a look at this uh, in that uh, previous webinar that we have uh, uh, conducted. So you can access a recording for it. Now, how exactly would you control this? You know, you, what you would be, do is by setting a focus key phrase. So I cannot emphasize on this enough that focus key phrase has to be contextual. Uh, hows are the most important questions, right? Hows, how to do something, etc. It is good if the focus key phrase is present in all the following elements of the page. It doesn't mean that you stuff uh, irrelevant. Uh, keywords and irrelevant keywords or doesn't mean that you just stuff the keyword and even though it's not making sense there right so you have to have it in content you have to have it in your know, blog post title in the sub uh, in the subheadings which is the h1 h2 tags then your meta title and meta descriptions then in your image or text as well and your page URL even though the importance uh, of uh, keywords in page URL has decreased it's not completely one to zero right so uh, this is uh, one thing that you want to consider. Uh, then once again, you have to uh, remember that uh, keyword tag is not really functional anymore. So focus keyword is something that would just help you target the article around a central idea. Right? So uh, this is how you are going to do your keyword research. And um, this is how you're going to uh, go around structuring your post for a particular contextual key phrase. You would need your webmaster to uh, s fix you, your matters if you're not, a, uh, not on a CMS like uh, WordPress. So what you can do is you can have the meta titles, meta descriptions, etc. in the header HTML of, your, of all your pages, right? So if you, if once again, if you're on WordPress, you can use WordPress SEO by Yoast to fix this. It's fairly easy there, right? And um, if you are planning to blog, and uh, you should, uh, if you are planning a, an organic SEO strategy, right? So uh, you, sh you should blog. So if you are planning to blog, please uh, use a CMS. It could be anything. It could be, uh, we prefer WordPress because uh, plugins, etc., are very uh, easy and it makes, the, it makes uh, the task pretty easy for people because so many plugins are available. These, uh, these were the factors, some on-page factors that are to be considered. Then another thing uh, that has to be uh, considered is your site speed, as I have discussed before, right? It, uh, it is one of the parameters that Google uses. 
Now, how does Google find out about the site speed? It relies mostly on user feedback to measure this. If you use uh, uh, Google toolbar with page rank measure, measuring activated, then the load time is calculated for every web page visit and sent back to Google. The aggregation of all of these reports is used to de determine your page load speed by Google. Right? So, uh, generally, when a user arrives at your website, they expect the load time to be less than two seconds. If the page takes a lot of time to load, they would just navigate away. They don't want to waste too much time with waiting for the page to load, right? So, uh, you have to fix your site speed. How to go about doing that? So, the first thing is to find out the page load time, right? So, uh, for this, what you can do is you can check it out in analytics. You can uh, go to your uh, analytics. You can you ha then you have to go to your site speed. It would uh, be in the left left panel of um, your analytics, the left sidebar. Then uh, you, you can um, have the overview of page page timing, right? So it will give you an idea of what, uh, what exactly is the average uh, page load time of your individual pages and your website on whole. Then uh, another uh, uh, page speed insights uh, tool is the one uh, which is by Google. It's just you changes as well. In addition to telling you how much, how long uh, your uh, page loads, uh, uh, how long does uh, the, your page, your website takes to load, it suggests you changes as well. And uh, insights on uh, what you are doing right and what you are wrong is also given by this particular tool. Right? You can just take cues from here and ask your webmaster to fix it. Right? So. Uh, it would uh, generally suggest you uh, uh, changes like um, you know to check the weight of certain external plugins, etc. Uh, because what happens is that um, especially if you are if you are on WordPress and you are uh, using certain plugins, then some plugins would be redundant. You are not really using them, but uh, they're just there because you you know you downloaded them, you installed them for some purpose. So uh, you have you should you can uh, uninstall and delete all of those uh, unnecessary plugins that are there, right? So that would uh, reduce your page load time significantly. Then upgrade your server if the speed is lower. Choose a suitable host, right? Uh, optimize all of the images that you upload on your website and on your blog. Uh, reduce their size, right? Then uh, uh, there are multiple other things actually. So here uh, I have given you a link to refer to. There are uh, multiple things that you can do to speed up your website. You can access this particular uh, uh, article and you can check it out there. Uh, there's another, another tool, tool that will allow you to analyze uh, your page load time and several other uh, non-contextual uh, ranking factors, which is uh, Pingdom. You can take a look at it later on. Now, uh, coming to uh, another uh, element of your uh, on-page SEO, which is uh, duplicate content. The fact is, uh, why do you need to take care of uh, duplicate content, especially if it's uh, within your domain, within, within your uh, uh, particular uh, website, and within your website, why do you need to take care of it? It uh, actually, it uh, makes it difficult for Google to decide which page is the original one, which, which page is the important one. So that's why it can hurt your website's overall rank. Otherwise, it doesn't, as uh, Sachin pointed out before, uh, Google will not penalize you for duplicate content uh, within your website, uh, but um, uh, it definitely it becomes difficult for Google to decide which particular page is the most uh, important one. So, uh, where does this duplicate content sneak in? So, assuming that you're not deliberately doing it, because uh, believe me, people do it deliberately, right? So. Uh, um, what happens is that sometimes Google would see your archived content as duplicate content. So you can make sure that the probability of this happening is reduced, right? So uh, this is your standard archive content, your tag pages, your uh, category pages, your date archives, author archives, etc. These are the uh, kind of pages uh, that can cause uh, duplicate content to sneak in. Uh, then once again, uh, your pagination pages, page one, page two. Uh, once again, if uh, if you are on WordPress, then you would be uh, very familiar familiar with all of these uh, terms and ter these uh, terminologies. Uh, these these are uh, a few of the elements that uh, because of which duplicate content happens within your domain. So how do you fix uh, these duplicate content issues? One thing you have to do is uh, you can check webmasters to identify duplicate content issues. As uh, soon as you log into your webmaster tools, you would be notified of any such issues if they're there on your website. 
you know, uh, webmasters uh, will tell you, it will notify you that uh, you have uh, duplicate content and so on and so pages. So uh, there are multiple tools that are there to check duplicate content. You can uh, use copy scape. Uh, this uh, tool once again is helpful because it checks for uh, duplicate content not just on your website but it can help you check for uh, plagiarism as well. Sometimes uh, what people do is uh, uh, they would just copy your content and post it as their own, right? You so uh, to take care of that, uh, this this uh, particular if you if you think that uh, somebody is doing that to you, then you can make use of this particular tool. Then uh, don't include the types of pages that you don't want indexed in your sitemaps. For instance, uh, tags, right? So uh, what what exactly are tags and categories? So uh, on WordPress, especially categories uh, is uh, while you're blogging then you are creating a lot of content, right? So uh, you would normally uh, divide your different posts into different categories. So uh, in addition to categories, there is something called tags, which is there, which is uh, used by WordPress. So uh, what we do is we don't uh, include uh, tags in our sitemap, right? So you can also choose to do that. I'll tell you how uh, that happens. For instance, if I am an, uh, maybe an education preparation website and I have a post on uh, uh, maybe physics, uh, physics question papers, right? Physics question papers for 2012. So uh, this post I have tagged as both physics and as both test papers, right? So uh, it would appear in both. So that's how it uh, it appears in two different tags. That's why this duplicate con content issue can occur. So to avoid this, just don't index this in your sitemap. Use uh, canonical uh, URLs. I would once again I would uh, not go too much into the details of uh, canonical uh, URLs because we have uh, conducted web webinars in the past that have covered this. You can uh, take a look at them on the website, right? So whatever archived content that you have, uh, whatever you don't want indexed, you can make them. You can no index, no follow them. For instance, uh, your pagination pages, date archives, etc. Then uh, another very important, very uh, beneficial thing to do is uh, to use 301 redirects to pass the inbound link authority to the original page. For instance, if somehow you have uh, managed to create a duplicate version of the same content, this, this for instance was my original content and uh, by mistake uh, some duplicate versions were created as well. So what you can do is you can uh, do 301 redirects uh, to lead uh, these particular URLs to this this one. So uh, like this, what will happen is that uh, you are passing all the inbound link authority to the original page. And for humans, it's pretty easy because they seamlessly reach the original page, uh, even if they use this particular URL to come, right? So these, uh, these were the duplicate content issues, and uh, these are the solutions that you can use to take care of that. Then uh, uh, here are a few uh, uh, other tools that you can use to analyze uh, or fix your on-page SEO. So uh, sitemap, sitemap generator, I have, I have given you already a couple of links to uh, resources uh, to use when you are creating uh, sitemaps. Here, here are a few others as well. Then uh, you can, if you are in WordPress, then you can use WordPress SEO by Yoast. You can use Mozbar. It has uh, some pretty good uh, features that you can access, right? Then um, you can access uh, this site called Internet Marketing Ninjas. It has an accumulation of various tools, including uh, Broken Link Checker. This is one tool that I particularly like. I don't know. I'm. I'm. Uh, uh, let me just try going online again. Let me see if it works. Yes, it's working now. So I already have this on my website. So what I'll do is uh, I'll go to my website. I have it installed already on my uh, on my uh, Chrome. This is the plugin that I'm talking about. So what it does is it analyzes all the different uh, links that are there on my web page, right? And it tells me if there are some broken links here. So it tells me that there is a there is one broken link. So what your webmaster can do is uh, uh, they can just you webmaster or you can do it yourself. You can check uh, uh, using this tool. You can check which of the uh, which of the links are not working perfectly, and you can go and fix it because uh, you don't want to give Google or uh, your visitors uh, broken links, dead links, right? So uh, that that this this uh, particular tool will help you get it. So 
this is linked to uh, this uh, is linked to where you can get that particular tool and you can install it and have it on your um, uh, as a Chrome extension or a Mozilla or whatever browser you're using you can have it as an extension right so uh, there are some other uh, tools as well there is an on-page optimization uh, checker it will tell you how, how well optimized your uh, let's just take a look at it once again you can install you can and uh, there's another tool I, I you can use more to of this see it tells you all the different page elements that are there it will give you your what what exactly is the page title of a particular post what is the meta description what are the meta keywords the uh, header tags the uh, h1 h2 tags so all the different uh, parts of uh, your on page seo it will tell you whether how uh, whether they are working fine or not right so uh, you can check it out if uh, any of the elements are not there you can go and fix it so you can install that as well right so uh, these uh, were the uh, on page seo elements that uh, you need to have fixed if you want to uh, rank well in google and if you want to uh, be given good uh, uh, good, good uh, page authority website authority by google now uh, let's come to the fourth part of the webinar which is uh, fixing your off page seo so this this thing uh, also i think it was uh, touched upon uh, during one of the questions uh, uh, during the question answer session but one of the questions that came in whether uh, backlinks etc they are uh, uh, link exchange is dead or not right quality backlinks from other websites this is uh, one factor which is uh, very important this is a metric that used to impact page rank but it has a uh, pretty good individual importance as well in hummingbird it's not just the, uh, quant the quantity of backlinks but the quality of backlinks as well right so you have to make sure that you are doing that so there are a uh, few ways to go about it so the first is the um, first one is to create quality content right so that is a key to everything if you create quality content other bloggers would link to you it, it is uh, you know uh, let's face it it's not very easy for everybody to do so there are a few other ways uh, that you can do it as well you can repurpose your content on different websites like on SlideShare, on Scribe or other similar sites by repurposing uh, this is what I mean uh, you write a blog post you maybe create a, a presentation out of it upload it to SlideShare you create a PDF document out of it upload it to Stripe no matter what you do you have to make sure that with whichever site you're contributing to your call though your content has to add some value right some value there so that is the key to it then uh, you have to mm, engage with other bloggers right by posting value adding comments on their blogs and forums and you can do forum participation I think Sachin spoke about this uh, particular uh, thing um, you know to participate in forums and to, uh, to give uh, value adding information there so let's talk about the uh, first one which is outbound and inbound links so link your content to good quality con uh, good quality con content on external websites right and inbound links create quality content for uh, people to link back to you right so uh, see this is for instance one of our blog posts we've linked it to external external uh, good quality uh, links right so when I say content repurposing this is what I was talking about this is one of the blog posts we have repurposed it on site share this is a blog post for one of our clients we have re repurposed it once again since once again on site share so there are multiple sites that will allow you to do this right so uh, another thing is uh, to uh, do blog commenting so what you can do is you can identify blogs that are very relevant to your domain and start engaging with them uh, with those bloggers right what you can do is you can go there post genuine comments um, you know you, you don't have to go and spam uh, their blog go, go and post some uh, uh, value adding uh, comments uh, uh, tell if you have something to add on to the uh, content that is already added there you can just go and comment there or another thing you can do is you can reference their blogs uh, if you are writing on similar topics uh, so this would serve two purposes you would get a backlink from those websites right uh, more, more often than not uh, if um, you reference a particular bloggers uh, blog uh, when you are writing then they would reciprocate by referencing uh, you in their content right so of course for once again for this you have to create quality content so you could you get good uh, link authority for relevant keywords uh, with this exercise 
the next uh, part is uh, forum participations so once again you have to identify the question answer forums which are relevant to you and you have to contribute to the discussions there occasionally posting backlinks to your website you would improve the credibility of your website and for yourself while getting backlinks in the process right so uh, what uh, what once again what you need to do is uh, uh, not don't please don't spam those forums just uh, post uh, uh, some, some value adding uh, well, uh, content there for instance if somebody has posted a question uh, post something that is relevant to it don't answer uh, unnecessary don't uh, uh, answer unnecessarily when, uh, if you don't have anything to contribute right without uh, uh, without any friends as such here are a few examples of uh, forums so b2c companies uh, for instance education companies etc they can uh, use yahoo answers they can use quora as well Yahoo Answers uh, is a pretty good, uh, uh, pretty good um, uh, forum to um, contribute to because uh, not only will you get get um, backlinks from there, you would be uh, able to rank for those particular. Uh, uh, for instance, somebody posts a particular question on, uh, on uh, Yahoo Answers, and you respond to that particular question there, and uh, then later on, on later date, if someone else someone else searches for that particular question itself on Google uh, then Yahoo Answers uh, will show up it's pretty easy for Yahoo Answers to rank right so if you have a link on that particular uh, Yahoo Answers um, uh, that question that thread then people can uh, come from there to your website directly right so it can help in that manner so for B2B uh, they can be multiple forums once again it could be Quora then LinkedIn groups and there can be other there are multiple other similar sites so you have to identify which forums are uh, uh, which forums make sense for your business for your domain right uh, then stack overflow is something that IT services can uh, make use of right so these uh, were some um, examples of forums you can identify other ones as well so here's an example of uh, groups of posting in groups relevant groups right so this is what you can do but once again you have to make sure not to spam the groups right so another um, part another important component of uh, uh, doing your um, off off-site SEO is uh, to use it to do guest blogging so what you can do is you can connect with the experts from your domain and ask them to blog on your website right then uh, what you can do is you can also guest blog on popular blogs right so uh, as I've said before this will once this because of that authorship author rank thing this will have uh, this can have really positive impact if you get a good blogger to blog for your website then because of that particular authors uh, author rank your website will benefit uh, similarly, if um, you post something of value, some guest blogs on uh, popular blogs, popular websites like Mashable, etc., then you would get uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the domain uh, authority that is there for that particular website. You would uh, that particular author will get it for you, and in turn, your business uh, blog will benefit from there. So, how do uh, here are a few marketers or uh, resources to find inbound links and guest bloggers. So uh, there's this tool called Links uh, Tent, which notifies you uh, immediately as soon as somebody links to your website, so you know that uh, people are linking to you. In addition to this, uh, you have access to this information in your uh, webmasters as well. So please uh, keep on uh, looking at webmasters uh, now and then. You have to do that, right? So uh, there's another uh, my blog guest. Uh, this is a place uh, that will help you find guest bloggers for uh, different kinds of domains so you can uh, you can take help of this there are uh, several other websites uh, like this and what you can do is uh, if uh, you identify influencers uh, in your particular domain in your particular business domain then uh, you can approach them uh, individually as well because uh, most bloggers uh, they are uh, they are you know they, they want to contribute to other forums as well other uh, blogs as well right they they are free, they do that so in addition the third thing uh, another thing which is uh, very important as I've mentioned before uh, uh, as uh, an off-site uh, SEO strategy is uh, social media you know social signals are uh, very very important right now so you have to be active on uh, Google Plus uh, which is very important you have to be active on Facebook on Twitter you have to be active on LinkedIn Pinterest 
slide share and their content repurposing sites and uh, you should be on social bookmarking sites like stumble upon dig etc as well right so this will help you now because uh, social media is uh, such an important part of uh, Google's uh, ranking factors uh, we would um, just talk some more about that you know social as an um, off-site uh, SEO strategy I'll mostly focus on Google plus right now so uh, let me quickly tell you about Google authorship that I've been talking about uh, so much um, in the webinar. So uh, these, uh, these particular markups, they have been around for some time, but it's gained a lot of attention in recent times. So as I've told you before, they give uh, effective results. Uh, why should you worry about authorship? As I've told you, it, uh, Google ranks articles uh, depending on author's credibility too. So when you have uh, Google authorship established for your blog or your uh, website, this is how your post will appear in search engines, right? Somebody searches for Facebook landing pages, it sees this. This is a blog post that I've written, right? So as you can see that uh, uh, how it appears in searches is different from how other posts have appeared here, right? It has uh, an image here, um, a headshot here, with the, along with the... Um, uh, mention of the author name as well as uh, the uh, different Google um, it is uh, a different Google plus circles that the article is in right so not only does it look good not only does it rank better it uh, it encourages people to click through and go to the thing because it looks looks better right it looks more credible with the author's name and the author's photo here right so um, this is one thing that you want to do so how do you establish Google authorship two ways to do it uh, so uh, options are when you have an email ID on the same domain as your website or blog. For instance, uh, aminoatleadsquire.com, right? Uh, other option is when you don't have an email ID on the same domain as your website or blog. Let's talk about the first option. So create a Google Plus profile, of course, that's the first step, right, to do it. Uh, then go to Google authorship page. Let me show you. This This is the URL that is there. Let me just quickly show you how to do that. So, where you want to just put your uh, email ID in here. Mino at leadsquack.com. I'll just post here. I'll sign up for authorship. What will happen is that I'll get an email from Google. I have uh, with a verification link. I just have to click on that verification link, and the uh, and one part of establishing authorship is done. There is another step which I'll discuss later on. But uh, if you have uh, an email ID on the same domain uh, as uh, as your website, then you can simply do it here in this manner, right? So, yeah. The uh, second option that is uh, if you want to link your content um, to your uh, Google Plus profile. So I can uh, show you how it's uh, done on WordPress. I will, I will not actually go online and show it to you. It's, uh, they are pretty basic steps. I'll just tell you the steps here. So all you have to do is uh, to log into your WordPress dashboard. Click on user section. This you will see in the left sidebar of your dashboard. right? edit the profile of the user whose authorship you wish to establish. For instance, um, um, if, um, uh, if, it, if it's my profile that, uh, where I want the authorship to be established, then I will go on my own user settings. Right? Then there are, it's pretty basic, uh, it's pretty simple on WordPress because there's an option there to add your uh, Google Plus URL there. You just have to add it, save it, and that will be done. So we'll, I'm not going online uh, to do it. You can take a look at it. So uh, th this, uh, this so far, this what I'm talking about is the first step. So let's talk a little bit about uh, for what what about the non-WordPress websites? How do they establish Google authorship, right? So uh, this is what you're supposed to do. Within the head section of your website's uh, page template, add the following piece of code. This is the code that is there. Uh, because we'll be sending you the PPT, you, what you can do is you can copy it simply from here. Replace this URL with your author's uh, uh, Google Plus uh, profile and paste it uh, on your on the head section of your website's page template. Right. So this is for single author websites. What if you have multiple author website? Um, so mm, then uh, what you have to do is on each posted article, you'll need to include a linked byline naming the author. So you can do this within your site template or by manually pasting a byline 
at the bottom or the top of the article text. So it doesn't matter either way as long as the name is linked to the author's Google Plus profile. Right? So this is, uh, this is the link that you'll be using for this particular thing. So once again, you have to replace this particular ID here, the URL here. Now, if uh, you have a multiple authors website with about section for individual authors, then once again, the procedure will be a little bit different. So then this is the URL that we'll be use using. And uh, uh, for each individual author's about page, you should add a link to their Google Plus profile. This time, you have to add uh, rel is equal to me, where you would normally add rel is equal to author, right? So this will do it for you. Now, this, all of these uh, steps, they were, um, they were a part of the first step of uh, establishing your Google authorship. Now, uh, the second step is to um, add a reciprocal link from Google Plus to your website. So, how to do it? Go, um, I'll just go online to show you where exactly to find it. So, all right, I'll log in. Let me just uh, go to when you're on the about section and you scroll down you'll be able to see the links here just edit it you can see the uh, contributor to section here as you can see that uh, I have been listed I'm listed at, as a contributor on uh, the lead squad blog so if I want to add another custom link all I have to do is uh, click on add custom link add the URL of the website where I contribute to and click on save that's it that would do so this is how you get your authorship established for your uh, for yourself or your for your uh, blog authors so uh, you can check if the authorship is established using Google's uh, structured data testing tool. So this once again is uh, pretty easy to find out. What you can do is you can paste the URL of any of your blog posts for which uh, uh, authorship is established here. Do, do a preview. Let me take this particular URL. Right? Is this here? Preview. See, authorship is working for this particular web page. So you can use this URL to check it. Right? So the second thing, once again, is uh, your Google Publisher thing. The, there are uh, two ways to do it. One is uh, if you are on WordPress, then you can do it through Yoast SEO. Right? For, for this, uh, I'll once again not go too much into the details of it. So uh, just that when you have uh, Yoast installed on your uh, website, all you have to do is take your Google Publisher pages. Uh, this is uh, this is page. This is not profile. Uh, this is a business page. So you have to take uh, the URL of your business page, paste it here, save settings. You'll be done. Right? That's it. Then another way to go about it is by putting a Google Publisher badge throughout your website. So for that, uh, Google Google gives you a tool to generate that. All right. So uh, see, this badge can be for an author or a business. So if I want to change this, if I want uh, something else to be there here, uh, see how Google's uh, Google's badge comes right. So uh, I can put my uh, company pages URL here, and this thing will be generated for Lead Squad as well. So all then I have to do is I have to copy this code and I have to paste it wherever I want this particular widget to appear, right? So uh, this will uh, create a Google Publisher markup on my website. So yeah, what what are the benefits of Google Publisher? Why should you do it? So your content would definitely be given more weightage by Google. Uh, and uh, this would happen. Google uh, gives information that you do. It uh, it gives um, um, a kind of um, small uh, snippet of um, all the different things you have been sharing on uh, uh, Google Plus as a page, right? If you if somebody searches for Lead Squad, sure. Same can be for any other business. That's if uh, the Google Publisher markup is established. So it gives you additional visibility. 
right? Uh, similarly, um, publisher can be done for non-WordPress websites as well. So you just have to add this particular uh, thing, this particular URL to the header section of your website. Just paste the URL of your uh, company's uh, Google Plus page uh, and uh, that's it, you're done. Then once again you have to have a reciprocal link from uh, Google Plus to website. This is once again fairly simple. How uh, I established the authorship, similarly you can uh, do it uh, for your website as well. Uh, when you are uh, setting up your page, you will get an option to paste your website uh, URL there. Uh, you just have to paste the URL of, for instance, I just paste, pasted the uh, each quads um, uh, website URL there and uh, that's it. The publisher thing would, would be done. Then uh, another thing, another reason why uh, social uh, is uh, a very important SEO off page SEO right now is because Google Plus hashtags are appearing in searches. So uh, Google is now ranking all of these um, hashtags. So you have to uh, encourage all of the all of your uh, people to all of your authors um, uh, to use hashtags as well when they're sharing through your uh, Google Plus business page, right? Uh, to be found for particular keywords. Now, uh, another question to be considered is, should you do the SEO bit yourself or should you hire an expert? So, uh, there are some certain questions that you need to ask yourself to answer that question. So, uh, when you choose uh, to do it yourself, you would need to hire a content person plus a website person, right? Then, um, if you go for uh, do it yourself, uh, then uh, you have uh, you sh you, then you should uh, go for a CMS like WordPress, you know, because uh, as I've said before, because of all the different plugins that it allows, it will make it easy for you, right? So it will help you take care of many aspects of SEO without any technical knowledge. So it is also very uh, important uh, to be up to date with all the changes in the search engine algorithms, etc. If you are doing it yourself, so use tools uh, that will help you keep your yourself and your team updated. So there are multiple tools that I have listed here. You can uh, access them through here itself, through this uh, presentation when we send it to you. Uh, so these tools will uh, help you. So for keyword research and analysis, uh, there's Keyword Planner, then Google Trends, Google Webmasters, Google Analytics, Uber Suggest, and Sulv, as I have uh, said before. Then um, CMS, you should go for WordPress. Then on pay for fixing on page SEO elements, you should go for WordPress SEO by Yoast if you choose for Word, choose WordPress. Then uh, for uh, uh, page rank, rank measurement, you can go for Google Page Rank Toolbar. This once again, as I've said before, this has not been updated in a very long time, so you can actually choose to ignore this. Okay, so um, you have you should uh, install Broken Links uh, Finder tool on your uh, um, on your browser. Uh, this is the one that I'd uh, shown you before. Right, then uh, you should have uh, social uh, monitoring plugins because fresh content is rewarded, right, by Google. So for this, you can use multiple tools. Topsy is one of them. What it does is it analyzes Twitter to find the top news pieces, top links, top influencers, etc., for a particular keyword, right? So it will give you all the fresh content ideas. You can use uh, Bottlenose as well. It displays the top results in your particular network. So if you are connected to uh, influential people in your domain, in your industry, then you will keep on getting uh, important news updates about whatever new is going on in your industry. So it will give you some good content ideas. So uh, there are certain tools that will help you uh, optimize your anchor texts as well. So you can uh, use uh, those tools. Then. Uh, uh, you, you can uh, use uh, a tool called Content Strategy Generator to get more content ideas, uh, right? So uh, it will give you content ideas based on the keywords that you put there. Uh, then uh, to check rich snippets, you can uh, check Google. You can use Google Structured uh, Data Testing Tool. This is the one that I showed you before to see the, whether the um, authorship established or not for my blog post, right? So. Um, if you have uh, an influencer plan, that is if you want to follow influencers and uh, persuade them to blog for you, then uh, you can use follower wonk to check uh, the social authority of the people you are trying to connect with. Right? So you can once again find guest bloggers by using my blog guest. Right? Then, uh, right, social monitoring plugins I've already discussed before. Right? So uh, that's it. These are the particular uh, 
tools that you can use for a number of things for your SEO. Now, um, coming to the last part of the, uh, the webinar, what should be your budget? What should be the ideal budget for your uh, uh, SEO, right? So if uh, your keyword competition is low, the keywords that you're trying to rank for, if the, the competition is low, then uh, you can have 10 to 15K uh, as your budget, uh, 10 to 15K uh, Indian rupees, right? If your uh, competition is medium, then you can have 25 to 40,000 uh, Indian rupees as um, uh, your budget per month. And if the competition is high, then uh, ideally it's good to have a SEO budget of uh, above 70,000 bucks, right? So once again, uh, another thing is that uh, if you have uh, an organic uh, SEO strategy, then you should have an in-house uh, team as well. So if uh, you should have an in-house uh, um, um, team as well, right? So that's it with this. Uh, I've come to the end of the webinar. Uh, I would um, now stop and I, we would uh, take a few more questions. Nilesh? Yeah. Thank you, Minu, for uh, this uh, very interesting session. Um, pretty good information uh, has been shared. Uh, so I'll, I'll pick a couple of questions which uh, has been asked by um, our audience today and um, because we've stretched this session beyond its time so I'll just pick few but most of the questions which has come in we have been uh, Sachin and I have answered them so um, this is, uh, I'll take one first which is uh, is there a way to uh, come on top uh, in the search engine ranking very very quickly it's a question from Jagdeshwari um, so the um, the uh, the answer is uh, which uh, which is that it is possible um, uh, with the with, with keywords which where there is a little competition or mild competition, but uh, according to Sachin and his experience, um, using spammy means to uh, you know get uh, on the top will not help because uh, you uh, you stand chance to get blacklisted and uh, never get an opportunity to uh, be uh, on the top. So. Uh, it's better to you know use uh, uh, the the straightforward techniques rather than you know shortcuts. So that's one. Um, then uh, we've got um, so we've got one question from Barbara. She's uh, asking, uh, wouldn't converting blog posts to PDF and uploading them to SlideShare, uh, ScriptD, etc., would be considered as a duplicacy? Um, Sachin, uh, you want to address that? Uh, I think you've already answered her. But uh, can you want to do you want to elaborate on that, please? Yeah. Uh, so here, uh, number of time press release is also used, uh, and you can actually get pre uh, press release published across uh, multiple websites, and it is giving a backlinks. In that case, it is basically the same content. But uh, what basically here uh, uh, we are saying is that you, what you're doing is you are uh, having the same content, but you're using different formats. So in this case. Uh, for example, slide share. So slide share, the information is present in a very different format. Uh, you can even create videos. So uh, your uh, basic effort initially goes in terms of creating that content, which is which in itself is a big exercise. So now you can actually redo it in a number of other formats and then actually post it on different other websites in order to get a link back. So this is what we are saying in terms of repurposing uh, content. And, and that is how you can actually utilize it in order to get, get a backing. Thank you, Sachin. Um, then we have another question. Um, so header, footer, and uh, from Deepak. So the header, footer, and sidebar links have been devalued. Now the focus is on getting on contextual backlinks, especially from guest blogging and press releases. So do you think uh, links from author bio would be discarded in future? Cause that's the area which is would uh, which would be used uh, to do spam. So um, I think uh, what, what we've heard and read is there will be a, a rank for authors also. So if you have, uh, you know, if, if, uh, so obviously if the author rank is not as good, then obviously it's not going to you know, create a big impact. Uh, but I, I'd like Sachin to add to it. Uh, Sachin, what, what do you think about it? Uh, see, header and footer, uh, anything that people would start misusing over the period, Google is smart enough to figure that out. So it is going to wait till a certain time and after that it is going to fade out if that uh, uh, gets really spammed. But I think uh, Google authorship is actually a very genuine mean because Google has got uh, all, it, it, it has not only uh, got, if there is a fake email ID and 
you are actually using fake email ID in order to actually uh, do uh, uh, Google like. At that point in time, it would understand that this is a passive email ID and it should not probably give so much of uh, uh, weightage to that. So by have, uh, Google authorship, in my view, in future would actually become very, very important and would be a very genuine uh, mean uh, by Google in order to identify whether uh, there is a person behind the email ID or a Google Plus profile if there is a genuine person with who is that. And the way uh, a Google uh, author is, uh, is, is participating across the forums, that again Google would be able to identify. So you are very right Nilesh, uh, uh, this is going to be the way forward. Thank you Sachin. Um, so then there's another question from Prayesh. Uh, how many times can we publish same PR or article? Um, so uh, Prayesh, I think uh, this practice of posting same content uh, multiple times uh, is not uh, a very good practice uh, in general un un unless you repurpose it in a way and uh, you know um, address, a, address some new um, uh, so, so the, the same content can be repurposed. There is no uh, there is no problem in repurposing as long as it addresses the same or uh, you know it addresses a different type of contextual question. So, I think this uh, this whole idea of publishing same article multiple times is not going to get you very far from an SEO standpoint. Then there's another question um, which is uh, does article marketing still work? Again from Prayesh. Uh, so, I think instead of looking at uh, this uh, whole debate uh, or the question on uh, article marketing uh, i mean the 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 way we should think about uh, is uh, how are we uh, serving the needs of uh, uh, the searcher who's going to, who's searching on uh, on the google uh, you know on google.com so if your articles still contribute to uh, the or addresses the the questions which are being asked on the search certainly the article marketing if that's what you refer will still uh, continue to work then uh, Mahesh has a question, what is the best for SEO, forum versus blog? Sachin. Uh, these both uh, actually serve a different purpose. I would say if you are serious about your SEO, you should have a mix of both. Uh, forum, uh, I was answering one other question, I think it was from Parker. Uh, uh, so uh, in case of blog, uh, you should, uh, uh, you need to just figure out where your real uh, target audience is. And uh, if it is on, if it is, if there is a very good industry forum on which you should participate, you should probably be uh, just doing forum. If you are finding that your target audience would like to have a more detailed uh, and would want to hear, hear you, then blog would be the thing where you should participate. And you can also, you will, you would also need to figure out uh, if there is a popular author in your industry whose views are being followed. And if you can actually uh, write uh, on his blog, that would be wonderful for you. So it just depends where your target audience lies. So do the things which are more related to your uh, target audience rather than for uh, search engine. And search engine would itself figure out a way in order to give you the reward accordingly. Okay, so I'll take one last question here. Um, and then we'll close. Uh, so uh, folks, we will be publishing the uh, all the webinar FAQs on our blog. So there have been very good questions from, from all the audience and uh, we really thank you for asking all the good questions for the benefit of the, uh, for everybody. So we'll compile them and uh, some of the questions we couldn't answer, we will address them in our blog. So we may not, you may not see the exact same questions in the blog, but you would be able to see that they may be covered in, in because some people have asked the same questions again in a different phrase. So we will uh, sort of combine them together and address them. I think, uh, you know, just one last point on organic SEO. I mean, uh, paid uh, search uh, still get, you pay for that, but organic also you pay for it, right? So whatever human resources you're putting behind uh, organic SEO, I mean, still is a paid stuff. Okay, right. perfect. So, um, so with that, I'll close uh, the session uh, today. Uh, thank you all for joining this and we really appreciate your participation. Uh, we will be um, sending an email with the recording of the webinar uh, within uh, four business days. So that's uh, what it takes us to sort of uh, do compile this whole thing. And uh, we will also be publishing uh, the webinar uh, recording on our uh, resources section in leadsquare.com website. 
and we will also publish the webinar FAQs, all the good questions which have uh, come in from the audience. We'll compile them and post it there. So thank you again for uh, participating, uh, and we we will I will hope to see you in future uh, webinar sec uh, sessions as well. Thank you very much, and you have a, a good day.